Howdy. So, I hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm a little surprised. I didn't, I didn't think that would happen uh, at all, let alone so soon. But now that I'm here, uh, I just want to thank y'all, <laughs> everyone uh, who has been watching and sharing my videos, and thank you to all the people who blew up my channel, people like you, Smarfer, and. Oddboss, I know you probably didn't intend to, but when you shared my video on Discord and Twitter, it blew up my channel a lot. Ever since then, it's been growing really fast. So I just want to thank all of y'all, to those of y'all who've had fun with me on stream and made it much more a pleasant time for I me. Mean, not that I wouldn't be having a pleasant time, but it's just more fun and I've got people to play with and interact with. So I want to thank all y'all. So that being said, y'all had some questions, and well, I got some answers. Some Ponyo fella asks, How long did it take to grow that smexy hair? And how long have you been heli-simming? So, the hair... It's about to my belly button now. But it's been getting exponentially slower because the hair is falling out faster than it's growing. So, I would say about two years. If you can power through that, you'll get nice hair. Because when it's like medium length to the point where you can't put it in a bun or a ponytail, but it's not short enough that it doesn't get in your face, it's a little annoying. That's, that was about a year, two years. But after that, it'll be good. It'll, it'll be a lot easier to manage. And how long have I been heli-simming? I would say I didn't really get into helicopter sim until I picked up War Thunder. And uh, I would say two years ago. But I've been into helicopters for a long time. I did play a little bit of Arma, but I didn't really understand the helicopter stuff. I'll get more into those details later. Someone asked me a question on that. Speaking of which, <laughs> have I ever tried Arma or DCS? Uh, yes, I've actually tried both. I played Arma Gold Edition on like my, you know, not very powerful Toshiba gaming or Toshiba laptop. I'd, I'd say what, 2016, maybe 2017. I also was playing other PC games like Metal Gear Rising and stuff. <laughs> And um, uh, Arm of Gold Edition was one of those games, like, I was playing it with the controller, too. Like, I mapped like, all the key combinations onto the controller. I did the whole campaign. Um, I didn't really do much flying, because most, most of the campaign was just, like, ordering your squad around. But um, it, was, it was fun. I can see why people like Arma. It's a really fun game with endless ways to play it. DCS, I did pick up DCS for like a couple hours. I tried the Huey up, um, and I'm going to roll some footage here of me doing that. It wasn't, I didn't do much, and it was pretty sloppily done. That was my first time really flying the Huey in DCS. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's pretty different in DCS, but it's also very similar. I feel like helicopters have a lot more inertia in DCS. As in, like, things get going and stop moving slower. Whereas in War Thunder, um, the Hueys are, they feel pretty light. So, like, you can, even though, like, they're, the controls are somewhat stiffy, it's pretty easy to just get going one direction to stop immediately from going another direction. But I will try out more uh, helicopter simulators like DCS and Arma. I'm not too excited about the patchy module in Arma. It's pretty cool and all, but um, I don't know, something about the Huey module. I really like um, piloting that archaic helicopter. <laughs> but I'm sure the Apache one's going to be fun in some sort of way, too. But I'll try that. I'll try more of that stuff out. I'll tell you this much. If they ever add a Cobra to DCS, I'll definitely be doing a fuck ton of that. As for Arma, I might uh, I might do some more Arma stuff in the future. 
I'm not sure yet though. I I haven't really played Arma two or three, so uh, Rob A. Heinlein, Heinlein. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Asking me about the boots. Uh, there's some Ariats I got. I was going to my sister's graduation in 2019, so I wanted to like dress like a cowboy because she was like, you know, in North Texas. I also never had a pair of cowboy boots, and I really wanted them. And I was like in my you know 20s, so I was like, as a Texan, never having owning a pair of cowboy boots, I was like, okay, I, this is heresy. I need to get some. So I looked around their like custom boot section, and I saw a pair of boots that I really liked, and I got them. How often do you get recognized in game, and how often is the guy wanting your babies? <laughs> Um, it's hard to really say now that chat's been disabled, but before chat was disabled, uh, you know, if I was in the G-Links, it was pretty, like, often that people would recognize me. Mostly because I'm playing the same BR on US servers, so I'm gonna run into the same people a lot. And, um, especially when I'm doing stupid stuff like cap rushing at the beginning of a match or <laughs> something like that. You know, people don't normally do that stuff, so when they see it, it's they'll look at the scoreboard and go, Oh my god, it's that dude. Um, so it was pretty often. Now that chat's disabled, it's, you know, it's hard to tell. Um, I don't think anyone wants my babies, but I mean, I, I don't really know what goes through people's heads. <laughs> Are there any helis that I would want added to the game? Yes, there's a ton. Um, there's so many versions of the Cobra. Like, there's the AH-1W. Um, there's the, the Super Cobra with, like, the first edition of the Cobras that had twin engines. There's also Hueys that had twin engines. Like, a lot of those uh, 80s Cobras, or late 80s, maybe early 90s. Cobras with the twin engines would be cool. Little Birds, any version, of, any any small helicopter that can carry rockets would be nice, but I would like a cockpit sight, you know, the, the bows are really cool, I like how they have rockets, but how the fuck am I supposed to aim them without any reticle in the cockpit? Um, the Comanche, oh, that would be awesome. Probably not, my, not like for my playstyle, probably not the best helicopter, but it'd be really cool. Um, it, it should be pretty quiet compared to other helicopters, so um, I think it would be very interesting to do rocket jockey stuff in it. Um, but the Comanche would definitely be awesome. Um, Kiowa would be really cool. Like I said, any any very fast and nimble helicopter that I can do rocket stuff with would, would be really cool. Or any versions of the Cobras, because I really love those. What am I packing there? <laughs> so, um, I don't know exactly what you're referring to. Um, uh, I'm assuming you saw a picture I took on my Discord. Um, I I carry a Jericho 941 and 9 millimeter. If that's what you're asking, I I don't know what else you <laughs> you would be referring to. I hate Megatron. Asks, do I have IRL helicopter experience or any pilot experience? I do not. I've never, f well, there was this one, like, program in high school. You could, like, go to the airport, in the, um, like, you had to sign up for this, obviously. Go to the airport in my hometown, and you would get to fly with any of the pilots that wanted to offer people, like, a, like offer people, like, a ride. Almost, it's not like a student thing. Uh, I don't remember. Um... But we went there, and I flew a biplane. I didn't fly, sorry. I, I got in the front seat, and the pilot was in the back seat. And he gave me the controls for, like, a split second. But, like, I pushed the rudder really hard to the left. Not really hard, but, like, I pushed it to the left hard enough that um, my headset flew off. <laughs> he caught it, but, because um, it was open top. It's really cool, but after that, I was like, you know what? No, I'll let you fly <laughs> from here on out. And so, uh, yeah, I, that's, about, that's as much flying experience as I have. I am going to try to pronounce this. 
Arseni uh, something stove. Uh, can you fly helicopters as good on mouse keyboard? Well, not in simulator controls. Maybe with the mouse joystick you can manage the cyclic or whatever pretty well, but you're going to need three axes of variable input. And a keyboard is all binary input. It's either 0 or 1. And you can't really have good rudder control or good cyclic control with zeros and ones. You need you need numbers in between that <laughs> to get that variable input. And the, the larger range of motion you got, the more control you'll be able to have. So, yeah. Having a controller, like an Xbox controller, where the joysticks are... They move like one centimeter to the left and right with your thumbs. Not really the kind of range of motion that will give you control. But keyboard and mouse, I mean, it's possible with a mouse, but you're going to need at least a throttle. And, um, I said not a throttle. You're going to need at least like pedals, I would say. Um, but if you're using mouse aim, you know, obviously, there's a ton of people. I I've seen plenty of people get nukes with helicopters using just a mouse. It's, um, it's not that difficult. In fact, you can actually do quite a bit better with mouse uh, mouse control because, well, you can aim your guns while flying, which you can't really do that um, if you're outside of mouse aim. So, I would say yes, you can, but it's a lot different. Thinking 0,000. Love the content. What do I do for work? I, um, well, I've worked a couple jobs. Um, the past two years worked as a salesman for a bit for like life and health insurance and wasn't really I, I was losing more money than I was making so I was just I moved on to a different job I worked for the Census Bureau for like a year and a half and that was uh, it was nice but I wasn't even working like more than 20 hours a week so it didn't really I didn't really rake in much money <laughs> And then after that, um, a couple months later, is when my YouTube channel got enough views and subscribers for me to put advertisements on it. And so when I started doing that, and I've, I'm not making enough money to like pay all my bills with it, but I can definitely almost pay my monthly rent with it. So I'm gonna try to make this my my job on top of streaming what is my hair care routine asking for a friend OFC so I don't really have much of a hair care routine my philosophy to my hair is to let it be chaotic but also to put a little bit of order into it just enough that it doesn't like create huge knots or dreads or whatever so it's pretty simple what I do with my hair now, I will say everyone's hair is different. You know, some people's hair might be curly, like mine. Some, some it might be straight. Some hair might be very dry. Some might be oily enough that it doesn't really get caught on things. My hair is like kind of in that in-between zone. It's a little straight, but it's also a little curly. It's not too dry, but it's moisturized enough on its own that I don't have to like put in conditioner every day. But... I'll say this, and you can try this out and see if it works for you. Don't wash your hair more than three days a week. Um, I shampoo and condition my hair two days a week at, at the most, usually. Sometimes I'll do three. So when I'm in the shower, I'll put my hair in a bun uh, so I don't get it wet. But if I do get it wet, it's not a big deal. Um, I finger comb my hair when it's wet in the shower. You can use a wet brush or a wet comb in the shower, but I've just found finger combing to work better for me because I can be softer or harder or gentler um, in certain areas. Like I finger comb my hair in the shower when it's wet, but I also, if it's really, um, it's got a lot of knots in it, I'll finger comb it like at my desk or whatever. I just any time I'll finger comb it. You don't want to finger comb it too much. You just want to finger comb all those uh, big knots out. And if you don't know what I mean by finger combing, you just basically just run your fingers through your hair. And once you run into a knot, you uh, wiggle your hand or your finger 
to uh, undo that knot or you'll stick another finger down lower and pull the knot out from a lower distance or a lower uh, strand of the hair and it may be a little frizzy when you finger comb it dry but once you hop in a shower and finger comb it um, later it will come undone and your hair will look really nice now uh, there's always gonna be a little bit of frizz uh, you're always going to have a couple knots, and it's uh, they're never going to go away. You're always going to have to finger comb it, but, you know, it's its very minimalistic in terms of hair care, in my opinion. I don't do anything else. Like, I don't put my hair in a bun when I go to bed or a ponytail when I go to bed. I do put my hair in a ponytail or a bun if I'm, like, bending over to work on a car or something or if I'm uh, going to work out or anything that would involve me, like, putting my head like in a 90 degree plank <laughs> so yeah I uh, I do put my hair in a ponytail in situations like that but I don't have any other special routines or anything now I do recommend you uh, are gonna get hair like mine get good shampoo and conditioner don't get two-in-one bullshit and don't get that cheap you know Walmart or HEB shampoo and conditioner I don't know what the best hair products are, but I mean, I'll tell you what I use. I use, um, I use that Doctor Squatch shampoo, not the the bar soaps. I, I wouldn't recommend using bar soap on your hair. <laughs> but they have they have the shampoo, and it uh, it looks really nice. Um, so I, I tried it out, and it actually did a good number on my hair. Like it's really feels great. So I sticking with that until I find something better. But it is somewhat expensive um, compared to like shampoo you can buy at the store. But since I'm only showering, or I mean shampooing, I shower every day. I would like to clarify. Since I'm only shampooing my hair <laughs> like twice a week, you know, I, that stuff doesn't, I don't need a ton of shampoo and conditioner. So I hope that answers your question. Helicopter community races to Mamo no Me. I've thought about doing some helicopter community events. Like a, a helicopter EC mode with uh, everyone who doesn't use K50s. <laughs> I thought that'd be pretty fun. I was thinking about like maybe like doing it in simulator mode too, but I don't know how many people here actually would want to do that. <laughs> so, but a helicopter community race, I think that would be really fun. However, some helicopters are just. Um, I mean, it depends. Uh, some helicopters are really fast, but aren't that maneuverable at top speeds, like the Mi-24s. They can have a really high top speed, but they can't maneuver that well. And you have other helicopters like the Bow, which don't have a high top speed, but they're very maneuverable. So it'd be very interesting um, to have like a helicopter racing track that had different kinds of, uh, you know, had straight runways and other areas where it's just really like quick turns. It'd be very interesting, but yeah, might do something like that in the future. Forged in Chaos asks, do I play tanks or naval? Yes, I do both. I play a lot of tanks, and I play tanks in VR most of the time. And when it comes to naval, I would play it in VR, but it's got not really optimized for VR. When you zoom in to shoot at uh, other boats, it doesn't track the boat with the camera and on top of that the gun sight for whatever reason it bounces up and down with the waves so it's really hard to use in VR for some reason because the camera is kind of weird on top of that the interface is the interface for VR is still not optimized in War Thunder there's a lot of um, there's a lot of elements of the HUD or the interface um, that what do you call it? It's like when you when you put something so close to your face you see it twice. That's how some of those HUD elements work. And not only do you see it twice, but like they move. Like a good example is in helicopter battles when people are shooting missiles at you. The icon is on the left and the right of the missile, so you have to look in between to see the missile. It's kind of, it's very disorienting. <laughs> uh, so I'd rather just play it 
without VR. And I, I'll switch to VR though if I hop in a plane. But yeah, I do play right, pretty much every game mode in War Thunder. Are you mad at the Australians for not warning us about 9-11? I don't know how to answer this question. Um, I, I guess. <laughs> Otter Musician asks, Do you pronounce the word as tomato or tomato? I'll say tomato, but if I want to annoy someone, I'll say tomato. Levi... Meth... I don't even know. Matthias, I, I, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Of course, first an A10 vid. Also seeing as your profile picture is Captain Falcon, have you played F-Zero? Or do you just know him from Super Smash Brothers? Well, obviously I think for most people they, they saw Captain Falcon in Super Smash Brothers or Super Smash Brothers Melee or even Brawl. Whatever, depending on what you, how old you are and what you grew up with. So yes, I did find them out in Super Smash Brothers, but I played F-Zero GX um, like 2014, 2015, like I was, I saw, um, saw a speed run for it and it looked so much fun seeing someone speed run that game. It like, I don't know, it just looks so much fun. So I bought uh, a GameCube disc in like 2014, 2015. And I basically beat the, the whole game on GameCube. And then I found out that there was a GameCube emulator on the computer. And that you could play it in VR. And so, as soon as I got a VR headset in like... 28, like late 2018. First thing I did was download that VR emulator. And I played F-Zero GX in VR on my computer and it was so much fun. I beat the whole campaign again and I did all the courses again. It was it was really fun. Um, I've thought about making more F Zero GX videos. I actually have a couple on my channel for some of the first videos I made. Um, it's just something's just so fun about going really fast in that game and using uh, I don't want to say um, exploits but like going faster than you should normally and using tricks to like get around the track easier it's uh, it's really fun so yes I have played a ton of F-Zero games I've also played F-Zero X um, but it's not as fun as F-Zero GX for sure especially in VR nothing come there's very few games I've played that come close to playing F-Zero GX in VR but yeah if you'll ever want to see me uh, play F-Zero GX on stream or just make videos on it, let me know and I'll do it. S. Sif Telper. Hope I pronounced your name right. What's your opinion on retractable landing gear on helicopters? I just can't take helicopters that can't retract landing gears. So, I am not really too picky on this, but I will say, like, it's it feels kind of redundant as helicopters don't really exceed, you know, most helicopters don't go that fast for not having landing gear caught, like creating more drag would get them going much faster, but uh, I'll say it doesn't really bother me. Uh, I fly really low to the ground, so having landing gear can act like as a buffer between me crashing and breaking my helicopter and me just breaking my, my landing gear, so I'll say... Um, Retractable landing gear? I don't really have much of an opinion on. But when it comes to skids or wheels, I don't know. I like skids because I can lock my helicopter down and I don't have to reduce my collective to zero and turn the brakes on to stop my helicopter from moving. But if I'm like on low engine power and I want to drive back to base because I don't have enough collective or RPMs to fly, but I can like hover and like basically drive across the ground. Wheels are pretty useful, but in most cases when that's happening, it's not going to repair my helicopter anyways, so this boy Thunder for some reason thinks it's perfectly fine to repair a tank with no barrel, breech, tracks, engine, transmission, and just like one crew member, but 
if you bring your aircraft back to base, it sometimes will be like, nah man, you can't repair it. <laughs> really annoying, but... Uh, I don't really care about retractable landing gear. I think it probably just creates more complexities in the helicopter than is necessary. Um, just for a little bit of extra top speed. But, um... You know, I also don't fly real-life helicopters. <laughs> C. Tom's asked, What is my favorite color? I would have to say blue. What shade of blue? I don't know. But blue. Michael Michael asks, Have you ever flown a real life helicopter? And if YouTube gets me more money, would I fly one in the future? I have never flown a real helicopter, nor have I been in one. If I had enough money and enough time, yeah, I think I'd try it, try it out. I would probably also try to get a helicopter license if good, because flying a helicopter, while it doesn't seem like a very commercially profitable skill for someone who's an amateur helicopter pilot or learning to become a helicopter pilot, it would be a pretty useful skill to have in the future, I imagine. Probably not as useful as learning how to fly a plane, but uh, or maybe not as useful, but like. There wouldn't be as many job opportunities, just because you can't really carry that many people in a helicopter as opposed to, like, 737. <laughs> That'll only be as efficient, I guess, and there's not as many people that you can have wanting to fly with you. I've thought about it. Might do it. Sam asks, what's the best part of Houston? I have no clue. I've been to Houston like twice in my life and both times I was really young so uh yeah I have no clue Darkhawk Gaming asks where do I find my love for helicopters well both my parents were in the military when I was growing up they are both in the army and so I would occasionally go to the army base when I was like a toddler I don't remember everything I did there um but my dad bought a Sega Genesis and a Sega CD when I was really young. And one of the, well, one of the few games that were on it was the, those old Thunder Strike games. And, uh, sorry, uh, the Strike series of, of games where you fly a helicopter in like a top-down view. So like Desert Strike, Urban Strike, Jungle Strike. Played all three. I played all of those. And they were, they were pretty fun. But I think the one game that really made me love helicopters was this game called AH-3 Thunderstrike on the Sega CD. For the time, it was a pretty um, advanced game. You know, in the, the mid-late 90s, to have a first-person helicopter game like that, it was pretty fun and pretty cool. They, uh, there's a lot of things about that that now like, I'm looking back on it, I'm like, wow, that was pretty cool. Like, they had uh, tons of somewhat accurate heli uh, helicopters, tanks, and planes. Like, they had Shilkas and had SU-25s. They had other kinds of tanks and stuff, too. The missions had, like, friendly and enemy AI. And they varied in, like, what you had to do. Depending on how high you flew off the ground is how quickly the anti-air would react to shooting at you, or if it would react at all. And also how high you flew in the game would determine if planes came after you or if missiles would shoot at you. It was a, it was a very interesting game. You also had 8 Hellfire missiles and 38 rockets and 1200 rounds of ammo just like a, an Apache, so it was, it was pretty accurate. Um, obviously the flying wasn't really that accurate. You're using a, a Sega Genesis controller <laughs> or something like that to control it, but it was a pretty fun game and I think that's what where my love of helicopters probably came from. Sadly though, my Sega Genesis kind of crapped out after a couple years, which was sad because there were a ton of games I loved on it, like there was a uh, Sonic CD, which was like the best Sonic game ever for the longest time, um, Final Fight on the Sega Genesis, that was really fun. There was a Star Wars game on there, I forget what it's called, but that was also really fun to play. 
as a kid. Looking back on it now, not really a very sophisticated game, but I, I miss playing Final Fight and Sonic CD and uh, AH3 Thunderstrike when my Sega CD broke. It really, uh, really made me sad. Will Petrie asks, Saw you in game running bombs on the K-50 and MI-35 the other night. Gonna make a cool video on that. Yeah, I was, uh, I was trying to do that, um, Battle Pass challenge where you get bombs in an aircraft, and I just figured it'd be easier if I first spawned a K-50 with bombs, which it, it was easier. Um, but I also was curious, because I, I heard that they made bombs drop individually now on helicopters. And I wanted to see if the K-50 had a bomb reticle, which it does. And um, it gave me a fantastic idea to, like, dive bomb people. <laughs> um, or go to parts of the maps where people are clumped up and just, like, drop bombs real quickly. I was also wondering if uh, it's possible to do, like, bomb trick shots or something like that with the helicopter. And it is. I actually uh, did a couple of those. And it was fun, but... Uh, I really wanted to do some G-Link stuff, so I switched back to that. However, running bombs in the other helicopters, the um, earlier ones, they don't have a bombing reticle or bombing CCIP, so it's a little bit harder to use bombs on those helicopters. But the K-50, though, and the K-52 and the MI-28NM, uh, you can you can do some seriously accurate bombing with them. Really fun. Well, I'll make a cool video on that stuff later, but as for right now, I don't have enough footage, uh, stuff like that, and all the replays of my past games with it that I saved, they're no longer compatible with this version of War Thunder, so. Speaking of this version of War Thunder, uh, since the new update just dropped, I'd like to just quickly clarify that I'm not really going to be able to make as much footage right now because the VR client of War Thunder is, a, is very unstable. It's about as unstable as it was when Red Skies dropped. So, until that is better, I'm not going to be able to do as much VR footage because it like literally crashes like every game now. <laughs> so, it's a little frustrating, but... Alright, that's all the questions. So, if y'all have more questions for me, you can obviously ask them and I'll answer them here. So, I'll, uh, I'll keep making videos. I'll try to do them at a faster pace now. I'm not too busy yet with life, but I'm not going to abandon this channel. See you guys later.